Hi, guys. Welcome back. I've got a show that I think is going to blow your mind. Meet Kara. The name of her channel is 24 Carat. She documented her life for 365 days and what she deals with when it comes to her weight. The name of this story is Day 276, An Unpleasant Story. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, it's Day 276, and I'm going to tell an unpleasant story. All of the trigger warnings for today, okay? If you're any kind of sensitive person at all, you probably want to skip this video. This one's not for you, because we're going to some dark places today. And I can't even really tell you why. I feel like in past videos, I touched on this story very briefly, but I've never told it in like in its entirety. I'm not even sure why I would tell it in its entirety. It's just one of those things that it's like a bad memory. One of those bad memories that you can conjure up at a moment's notice with perfect clarity. You can remember it exactly as it was that day. But putting it out in the world, that was something I never thought I would do. But I do think that part of a health journey is coming to terms with those parts of yourself from your past that you might not be super proud of. So that's what we're doing today. Back in the summer of 2010, I was starting to take these um, summer classes in college. But also that summer, um, two of my grandparents died, my grandma and my grandpa. My grandpa was sick. We kind of knew he was going to go. He was in the hospital and he was having a bad time. So I went to the hospital to see him the very last time, the last time I would ever see him because his kidneys were failing. He was just, he was on the way out and everybody knew it. So I went there, I said my goodbyes, I touched his hand and I left. To say that I was affected, you know, that's an understatement, but I'm not really the kind of person who can show it in a, like I always felt like I had to be really strong. I had to be really like solid. So I went home and I decided to do my workout because like every other time in my life, I was trying to lose weight and you can't miss a workout even if your grandpa's dying. That was the logic. So I went down in the basement of my parents' house and I put on my workout video. I was doing one of those insanity workouts. And about halfway through, my dad came downstairs and said, hey, your grandpa passed. And I was like, ah, shit. But, you know, have to finish the workout because, oh my gosh, what a loser you are if you can't even finish the workout. That was my mindset. It was a very disordered way of thinking. Every other person in the world would not have even started that workout that day. Or they would have done it to make themselves feel better. It wasn't making me feel better, it was making me feel awful. So I was down in the basement trying to finish the insanity workout and there was one exercise I couldn't do. I had never been able to do it. It's no big deal. Like nowadays, no big deal. I would have modified it, I would have you know, done something different or I would have ended the workout, but not that day. It was so upsetting to me that I couldn't do this thing. I don't even remember what it was, burpees maybe, or, or that like around the world thing. I don't know. It was one of those like dumb, like way too intense workout moves that I, I wasn't able to do when I was at my heaviest weight. And it was so upsetting to me. I remember looking down at my stomach and just in frustration, I made fists, like really solid fists. And I started punching myself in the stomach, just punching the fat, just punching those fat rolls, like, oh, so frustrated, so angry. I couldn't, like, if only these were gone. If only I wasn't so heavy, I could do this exercise. I could do all these things I want to do in life. I can, you know, I, I can be a real person. So I was just punching, 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 and it hurt, and it didn't matter because even that hurt kind of was just fueling that frustration. Real quick, if you've ever felt this type of frustration or angst, dealing with your weight loss, please, please let us know in the comments. And for a very brief second, I had this thought. I could cut it off. I could cut the fat off of my stomach. If I went upstairs and got a knife, I could cut the fat off. And yeah, uh, you know, it would hurt a lot. And yeah, I would go to the hospital, but it's not like they would sew my fat back on. They would just, you know, close me up and then I'd be skinny. And that was the scariest thought I've ever had. That was the most disordered and unpleasant. You know, it was like something from a horror movie. It was like a monster took over my brain. Like all those years of bullying, all those years of being 
looked over, being passed over, and now a death in the family of somebody who really, you know, was very important to me. I lost my mind in that moment. And I do think that if I had been in the kitchen or like upstairs where like my hunting gear was, I would have definitely, I would have come really close is what I'm saying. Now, I never actually did any of that and I've never self-harmed, but just the memory of how serious I was in that moment of like, I would have done that, just how serious I was feeling is really scary to me. And whenever somebody comes at me and says something like, you know, just try harder, just try harder, go on a diet, you know, just eat less and do more, just work out, like, just like cut sugar out of your diet. It's so easy. Just cut, you know, uh, like 200 calories off of your diet in a day. Anytime somebody comes at me with really trite um, advice like that, that memory of that moment in my life, that was the culmination of a hell of a lot of diet culture coming to a head. It, I, I would have rather done that than be fat anymore. And I think that's part of what I like about intuitive eating. It's very self-controlled. I don't mean like self-control, have self-control, don't eat that donut. I mean, it's self-controlled. I'm the one making the decisions. I'm the one making the plan. I'm not being influenced by these outside forces that are sometimes opposing outside forces telling me, you have to be fit, you have to be skinny, you have to eat more of this, you have to eat less of that. It's not, it, it's not something being imposed on me. I don't really know why I'm telling this story today. But I think that if you're a fat person who's been fat your entire life, I bet you can relate on at least some level. That desperation, that horror of what you are and the body that you're trapped in that nobody will ever approve of. I think that there are bullies out there who probably need to hear that story too because I don't think bullies really think about the culmination of where their hatred goes, of where their like disdain and disgust actually takes people when it comes to the end of the line. The end of the line of bullying is pain and violence, either toward yourself or toward other people. I'm happy that I'm at the point now where I work out because I want to, not because I feel like I have to. If somebody close to me were dying today, God forbid, I would not go and do a workout. And I think that alone is real evidence that I'm at least getting a little bit better. I'm still not entirely comfortable with who I am or how I'm doing things, but it's not at that point right now. So there's your story, your scary, unpleasant story. That was an unpleasant story, but one thing that I think we can all appreciate is Kara was 100% real there. Kara, thank you for sharing that story. What she said there at the end is really striking. When you bully people, a lot of times they end up turning that frustration either on themselves or on others. And with that being said, one of the best things we can do for our mental health is go outside and take a walk. So why don't we do this? Go get your shoes. Let's go for a walk. How are you? Hey, let's stay to the, um, let's stick to the storyline of animals because I think we all love animals. I'm especially fond of dogs. Yesterday I told you that a dog had crossed the crosswalk here and then the crosswalk here that I'm literally in now. And it really amazed me because the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That dog should have just went right across the street in a diagonal to get back to her house. And I know it was a female because it had 
multiple teats that looked, it looked like it might have been pregnant, to be honest with you. That's probably what it was doing, ladies. It was probably visiting its boyfriend down the street and then had to go home later. So anyway, it took both crosswalks. The reason I find that amazing is it just kind of came across to me kind of like a human quality that the dog had. It was like it knew that that crosswalk gave it a little bit of a, I don't know, safety uh, from the elements or something. It was really crazy. So check out this story that I just heard today. There's an Oregon ravine in Baker County, Oregon, where a gentleman crashed into a ravine. He was stuck and he was in bad shape. He crawled out of his car and he got to dry land and he basically was stuck there for 24 hours and he was injured. So he was lost and his family knew he was lost because he hadn't shown up back at home. But one of his dogs managed to come home. So they alerted, uh, alerted the authorities and by the dog escaping, coming home. And by the way, the dog had to travel four miles, okay? He makes his way home. They call the Baker County Sheriff's Office. They're able to go and find the man in the ravine and they had to cut him out because apparently he was in an area where you couldn't just get to it. You had to like cut through trees and debris and branches, right? To get to this guy. But because of his dog being able to get out and go home and get help, his dog inevitably saved his life or basically saved his life. Here's the crazy thing though. You know, if someone rescues you, and by the way, the gentleman rescued was Brandon Garrett and this just happened on June 3rd. The, uh, the dog once again went four miles to help. And, and here's the thing, if, if a child of yours goes four miles to get help and you don't wanna mention the child's name, totally understandable, right? You don't need your child getting all that publicity. But would you believe it? This guy had four dogs. One dog manages to go and get help, right? Hi doggies, speaking of dogs, right? And instead of, um, making this dog famous. They didn't even mention his name. Can you believe that? Hey, we'd like to keep the uh, dog's name out of the paper. You know, we don't need all that press, right? So Brandon Garrett, your dog rescued you and nobody even knows the name of your dog. That might be bad reporting for good news, for the Good News Network, so. But either way, it was still a story I wanted to tell because of that situation with the dog yesterday. Hey, I don't know if you guys have noticed because maybe some of you don't watch long enough, but about half my videos, maybe two thirds of my videos, have a little music soundtrack. Sometimes you guys will let me know if you like it or not, but every now and then I'll, I'll find a funky, like disco beat or something, and I'm like, that one's a good one. So if you ever hear one where you're like, hey, that one sounds better than they usually do, let me know, because that's what I always wonder. And I'd imagine there's some people that don't like the sound of, uh, of music at all or whatever, but I usually just have it on there for 35 to 45 seconds or so, maybe a minute, you know? It's hot, guys. It's like 84 degrees already. Normally when I'm out at this time, right around, right now it's around 7.15. Normally when I'm out at this time, it's about 5, 6, 10 degrees cooler. So this is definitely gonna be a warm day. I think today it's supposed to get up to like 113-ish. So, oh my God, that's gonna be something else, you know? Only in Arizona can we roll off numbers like 113 and 114 and it's just kind of par for the course again because it's 113 or 114 here in Arizona, we know that it's probably 112 degrees today in Las Vegas, but you won't hear about that. I think Vegas pays good money not to have people know its temperatures without searching for it. Because I don't think I've ever heard in my life, Las Vegas, Nevada, 110 degrees, but you hear about Phoenix being 110 degrees all the time. I'm telling you, we're the same place just less casinos. By the way, if you ever go to Phoenix, Arizona, 
we actually have quite a few casinos out here. There's one here, one here, one here. It's not like the strip in Vegas where there's nothing but endless casinos, right? It's, uh, it's more of like little areas of casinos, but our casinos are big and our casinos are popular. So if you really love Vegas, you might wanna change your vacation plans to just come down to Phoenix. We have excellent places to eat. We have excellent places to go for family or even if you're single and solo. And uh, you know, the only time I wouldn't recommend coming down here is probably July or August. But again, if you come down and stay at the Desert Diamond Casino here in Glendale, or if you go to any of our other casinos, man, they'll take care of you. We've got nice casinos out here. I, uh, my family likes to go to one called Viquiva. It's this small little one way the heck down there, which doesn't really make sense to me. It's like, why would you ditch the casino that's literally five minutes away to go down to one that's, you know, probably 45 minutes away. But, you know, sometimes people find their lucky slot machine, right? I say lucky because, you know, maybe they win on it once in a blue moon. There's a lot of people that when it comes to gambling and stuff, they have a lot of superstitions. So I, as you guys remember last week, I was talking about the uh, NBA Finals with the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. The Celtics look really good. They ended up destroying Dallas for games one and two. I believe tonight is game three. I'm not 100% sure, but if it's not tonight, it's tomorrow. But here's my thinking. If Dallas loses again, and they go down 0-3, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Desert Diamond Casino and I'm gonna probably put 100 bucks on Dallas to win the championship. Let me tell you why. If they're down zero games to three, if they end up winning the championship, it'll probably pay a couple hundred to one, right? Or, or quite a few dollars to one. What that means is if I bet 100 bucks on Dallas to win and they end up winning four games in a row and winning, God, I might be able to win tens of thousands of dollars. So if that's the case, maybe I'll take my uh, camera with me into the casino and see if I'm allowed to uh, videotape that transaction for you. I think those are bets that are really excellent ones to take. The reason I wanna make that bet, and I think I told you guys this before, one time me and my friend Billy, this is way back in sixth grade, I spent the night at his house. My family had basic cable back then. My mom had basic cable in our house, but Billy had like all the channels, premium cable. One of the channels he had was Showtime. The first Mike Tyson fight I ever watched in my life, the full fight, because I watched highlights before that, but the full fight I watched was him and Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas ended up winning and beating Mike Tyson by TKO or whatever, by knockout. And I don't know if you guys remember, but that was like one of the greatest upsets of all time. Literally David versus Goliath situation, even though Buster Douglas was built more like Goliath, right? But if I would have put maybe a hundred bucks on that fight or a thousand bucks on that fight, which of course I was too young back then, but if I would have, I probably would have won tens of thousands of dollars, if not more. Those are lottery tickets that people should bet on. I know I'm giving you guys a betting uh, critique here. When you go to the casino and you put a couple hundred bucks in a slot machine, there's a good chance you're gonna walk away with zero dollars. We all know that, right? It's real easy to lose at a slot machine. But if you could go down and you could bet a hundred bucks on the Dallas Mavericks to win the championship, you're no longer betting on a magical spin of a slot machine. You're no longer betting on the ball landing on a spot like you would in, in roulette, right? You're no longer betting on balls coming down a chute like with the lottery or with Keno. You are actually betting on human beings that have a chance to make a comeback. So again, that's my game plan. If the Dallas Mavericks win tonight, great, because I'm rooting for the Mavs. Lee, uh, Mala, I know you're rooting for your Celtics. 
But again, the game plan is if the Mavericks lose, first thing I'm going to do the next day is go down to the casino and place a bet on the Mavericks to win the championship. My thinking is if you're going to bet, bet small to win big. Those are amazing things. And then you know what? If I win, I'm going to take that money and buy a bunch of lottery tickets. Yeah! Yeah! That would be crazy, huh? That would make the news, by the way. If I went and won 10, 12, 15 grand and bought $10,000 worth of lottery tickets, oh my God. I would definitely call the news, let them know. Hey, crazy guy, buying a bunch of lottery tickets. So anyway, what do you guys think of my idea? I think it's a pretty good idea, right? The chance of them winning four in a row super low, that actually makes the bet super easy. What do you mean, Jesse? Well, odds are I'm gonna lose on that bet. So if you lose, no big deal. But if you uh, get fortunate and you're able to win, hell, you're gonna win a lot more than you bet. Those are the type of bets that you only need to win one out of every 20 or 30 bets to break even and more than likely you're gonna be a way ahead of a break even if you get lucky and win those. I know you guys don't wanna talk about betting. Let's talk about my final four days. Guys, I only have four or five days left of walking. What's my plan today? Well, after my walk, I'm gonna to go to Planet Fitness. Yesterday, I upped the intensity. So instead of a 30 minute walk, I did a 40 minute walk. And then that 40 minute walk has a five minute where they keep you walking, but at a slower pace to kind of get your heart rate back to normal or whatever. So basically I did 45 minutes at the gym of walking in addition to our 30 minutes together. Also did a handful of push-ups and sit-ups and I did the torso twists. I'm really trying to take this seriously. I'll tell you one thing with my push-ups and stuff, I've noticed a lot more muscles in my uh, upper body area. Again, because of my surgery, I'm not doing sit-ups, but I'm telling you what, if I were doing sit-ups, I have a feeling my gut would be really, really flat. I'm starting to get to the point where I still have the gut, but I don't have very much pudginess that I could grab. Man, when I was 185 pounds, I could literally just grab chunks of flesh from my back and my side and my front gut. Not very good. I knew there was a lot of weight to lose. Had no idea it would be so challenging. So again, if you're new or if you've been with us for a while and you're having troubles, the key is just not to give up. Remember, it's your body's job to assume that you know there might be a famine or a starvation and that you're not getting enough calories. So it immediately goes into like, I don't wanna lose fat mode. And so a lot of people have trouble the first seven, eight, nine, ten weeks losing weight. Because we know people tr have trouble losing weight, we also know that, of course, some people are going to need a little bit more time than others. So, again, Mala, Sherry Ann, if you're having troubles losing weight, don't stop. Three or four pounds in a dress size is perfect. Let's just keep going. We're going, you're going, Mala, you're going to hit a second dress size here in the next week or two. And keep in mind, if you're doing push-ups and sit-ups, then you're probably developing a little muscle as well. That muscle, when you're sleeping, will burn a couple more calories than, you know, than not having the muscle. So just trust me, girls, it's going to get easier. And guys, keep in mind, as your gut goes down, you're going to start feeling more and more energy, right? You might even want to snuggle with the missus a little bit more, right? You're gonna start feeling good about yourself. Just remember, this is one of those exercises, guys, that the harder you try, sometimes it seems that much more cruel because you can't force it, you know? Jesse, I've been walking every day. I'm drinking nothing but water. I haven't had a Snicker bar in a year, right? When you have these stories, just know your body is going through a stage right now where it's getting ready to release all that excess weight. It just takes time. So promise me that you're not gonna give up. This, guys, is not, I repeat, not the time to give up. So now that we've got that give up thought out of our head, let's move forward. 
and let's dominate this next three months, okay? So we're gonna change it from our first 90-day challenge into our second, but again, all of us are at a different pace than we were just three months ago. Three months ago, guys, Lily was 11 pounds heavier, right? Kate, you were 10 pounds heavier. I was uh, 14, 15, 16 pounds heavier. I haven't stepped on the scale in two or three days, so I'm not exactly sure where I'm at, but guys, I'm gonna try my darndest to get as low as I can doing the basic stuff that I always do by day 90. And that's what I urge you guys to do. Don't ever give up. You find yourself waking up at midnight to go take a piss and on the way to the bathroom, you grab a couple of cookies or brownies from the fridge. Don't give up. Enjoy your brownie. Take your piss. Go back to bed. When you wake up in the morning, take an extra 15 minute walk, okay? You take that extra 15 minute walk, it'll eat away some of that guilt. If you don't get rid of that guilt, you're gonna shrug your shoulders, you're gonna throw your hands up in the air, and when your hands come back down, they're gonna have another brownie in them. Don't do that to yourself. Just forgive yourself. That's the number one thing I want you to take, even probably over walking. Just get over your idea that you're some bad person because you had a cookie or a brownie. It's absolutely no big deal. You know how many cookies and brownies I've had? Do you know how many times I've bought in a sleeve of Fig Newtons and eaten the whole sleeve in one sitting? And even if you don't finish it in one sitting, do you know how many times I've waited till the very next day thinking I'm doing some willpower movement and I end up eating them the next day? It all happens. And I can tell you one thing, when you're walking every day, you can eat that stuff and kind of bounce back from it as long as you're willing to still get away from it. If you're gonna eat it forever, pig out on sweets forever. Your walking can help you maintain your weight. Your walking can help you look a little bit healthier than you are. But on your insides, your lab work will probably show you that you're not so super healthy. Guys, uh, another thing that I heard on videos that maybe we should do for this next 90 days, especially if you're brand new, take a picture of yourself. Turn sideways and get somebody to do a profile picture because what's gonna happen is occasionally you're gonna weigh the exact same, but your body's gonna look different. What do you mean, Jesse? Am I gonna grow boobies? No, you're gonna lose the boobies, Bob. You're gonna get skinnier. Instead of looking like the pregnant man emoji, you're gonna start looking a little buffer. So what happens when you start to look buffer and you start to lose inches around your waist, which by the way, guys, these are waist size 33s right here. I went from like a 36 or 38 to 33, okay? So when you lose inches around your waist, when your man boobs start to go away, when your pregnancy looking gut for a man starts to disappear, if your weight's the same, who cares? You're obviously composed differently. You obviously have more muscle and less flab. That's why your weight is the same. So Mala, Imogen, you said you were a college swimmer six years ago. Mala and Imogen and even Sherry Ann, because you're constantly using your weighted vest when you walk, you ladies might have quite a bit of muscle just underneath the surface of what appears to be flab. And so what'll happen is Sherry Ann, I think you even said that your dad asked if you were sick once because he noticed you were losing weight. Isn't that weird that the scale might not say a darn thing, but you might actually appear smaller to your family? Well, guess what, Sherry Ann? It's because you are smaller to your family. I'm trying to keep it where the sun doesn't blind you by keeping me between you and the sun. So again, I'm just really, really excited. Guys, I'm no longer this 185 pound guy with a painful morning. What do you mean painful morning? Guys, don't you wake up in the morning sometimes and your stomach is just screaming, feed me, damn it, feed me, and I want the Captain Crunch, not the Cheerios. And sometimes you have to say, you know what? You're getting Cheerios. And, you don't, and if you keep hurting me, you're gonna get plain oatmeal. Rah! 
God, I'm telling you guys, I am a big proponent of plain oatmeal. If you want to get away from your morning grum stomach grumblings, one packet of plain oatmeal three or four days in a row, and pretty soon you'll be ready to skip breakfast. Guys, the best thing you can do is get used to eating boring foods, especially for your snacks. One of the best snacks you can have is a plain packet of oatmeal. Get used to getting rid of that annoying hunger and get, get used to being more regular. You know, if you have oatmeal every day or a good three or four days a week, it's gonna have like a Metamucil type property. And speaking of drinks that fill up your stomach, if your doctor's okay with Metamucil and you don't have a psyllium, uh, you know, a psyllium issue, in other words, you can take it, not a sensitivity, but you can actually take it, I would ask your doctor if it's okay if maybe you have a morning glass of Metamucil. Whether it's oatmeal or Metamucil, it's really good if you can be normal and regular, not normal, but regular. I have a lot of friends that are girls that have told me through the years that women tend to be a little bit less regular than men. You know, when you walk every day, you're gonna be more regular. If you eat plain oatmeal consistently, you're gonna be more regular. If you have a daily glass of Metamucil, again, if your doctor's okay with it, you're gonna be more regular. And if you're more regular and you're walking more, guess what, you're gonna sleep really, really well. One of the side effects of walking is improved sleep. I've had quite a few of you tell me, Jesse, I'm sleeping like a baby. Do you know how important it is to have a good night's sleep? It's super important. It's probably more important than having breakfast in the morning, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of literature out there that'll lead you to believe that maybe breakfast as a morning food was kind of overrated and not necessary. And I don't want you guys to think I'm against breakfast because the other day when I visited my daughter and granddaughter, we had bacon and eggs, you know? So I did have breakfast, a good breakfast. And I wish I could say I made a smart move and ditched the tortilla, but you know, my daughter made breakfast for me. The least I could do is enjoy the breakfast. But you wanna know what I did that day? After I got done having breakfast with her, I didn't drive home. I drove straight to Planet Fitness and did a 40 minute walk or a 35 minute walk. That's what life is, guys. You want to enjoy your food without any guilt? Just take an extra walk, right? You want to drink that ice cold lemonade or ice cold Pepsi? Just drink a water afterwards and take a walk. Walk it off. Earn your sweets, right? And just imagine if every meal you ever had at lunch at your job, imagine if that came with a 15 or 20 minute walk. I'm telling you guys, we can get skinny real quick, real easy. Because you and I are older, right? Because we're in our 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, the days go by quicker than they do as, as young people. You remember when you were tw in your 20s, you were very impatient, you needed stuff to be now, now, now. Well, now you're at an age where, you know, the simulation's going quicker than ever. Every day feels like it's faster and faster, right? So guess what? The next 90 days, they're gonna go even quicker. But what I want you guys to do, especially if you're brand new, is really take a, take a look at your body. Go in front of the mirror. Take a sideway view, right? Where you're kind of looking at yourself from the side, a profile view. And really see and grab where a lot of your flab is. And what you're gonna notice is after just three or four weeks of walking, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to grab that flab. And if you're a guy, it's a little bit easier to tell when you've lost inches because all of a sudden, you need a belt, you know? In my case, I don't need a belt. I had clothes waiting for me. So I was kind of extra motivated to get back into shape. But think about this. Some of you guys are gonna have the same experience I do where you go from a waist size 36 or 38 or maybe even 40 down to the low 30s. That is a super duper accomplishment, you know? And I wanna give a shout out to Ken Wang. Ken, I don't even know if you walk, but you're there with us every day 
you always give us little tidbits on what we can do with our diet and stuff. And I thank you for that, Ken. Let's all give Ken a thank you, Ken. Ken, that's what we need. We need to know that people like you are out there and you care enough to give your advice. And you do it in a way that's not cruel or mean or putting down anybody, you know? You sometimes say things a little straight to the point, right? You know, like, hey, this is why people struggle. Quick battery change, sorry about that. But anyway, back to what we were saying. So Ken, I really love your enthusiasm. A lot of times when I talk about oatmeal or talk about someone else's diet, he's like, hey, trade in the Twinkie for a steak. Yes, Ken, you're a proud uh, meat eater. But I think Ken also eats fruits, vegetables, and a lot of other things. But his game plan, and I like Ken's. Ken, if you ever make a video, let me know and we'll, we'll review it. But his game plan is, hey, I usually gain weight during week times of the year. For example, if it's a holiday or family get together. Ken, you're not alone. I think most of us are that way, right? The only difference is most of us, after we lose five or 10 pounds, we just keep gaining weight and keep on going, right? Like no big deal. Ken, on the other hand, will do OMAD, which stands for one meal a day. And Ken will do OMAD for a couple of days to a week and he'll lose that 10 pounds just like that. And then he goes right back to his normal routine. And I think his normal routine is consistently working out and stuff, but Ken is very honest. It's not uncommon for him to gain five or 10 pounds during the holidays. I think that's similar for all of us. So what we can do is we can go Ken's route, right? One meal a day until things get back to normal, or you could just constantly stick to a routine because I have a feeling and Ken will probably agree with this. Even if Ken did not do OMAD, even if he just gained that five or 10 pounds, he goes back to his normal routine. Worst case scenario, right, Ken? In a couple of weeks to a month or two, you're probably gonna naturally lose that five or 10 pounds that you gained. If you continue training, which you do, then the following year, your body might be able to even, you know, go through that holiday season with the family and, and maybe instead of 10 pounds, maybe you only gain three or four, you know? So just const constantly stay consistent with your game plan. And remember, a couple of people like Wayne uh, Cooney, I forget Wayne's last name, I think it's Cooney, and um, Sherry Lorena, guys, they ate quite a bit of food, but they walked a lot and that was their game plan, but they didn't have a 90 day game plan or a 30 day game plan. If you remember, Sherry walked for a consistent five or six months and she lost 50 or 60 pounds. With Wayne, he walked for the whole year, didn't do a darn thing to his uh, diet and he lost 50 or 60 pounds. What that tells me is not that Sherry and Wayne are superhuman, not that Ken is a superhuman, they just all had a game plan and they stuck to it. So even if your game plan didn't involve walking, Terry, Terry from Utah, the Terrify, you're in a situation where right now you took a cortisol shot, right? And that cortisol shot in your hip area has made it where you've lost feeling. So you're walking and you feel great, but you know that those cortisol shots wear off after a couple of weeks or a couple months you might be in a situation where maybe you have to go to, hey, good morning. You might be in a situation where maybe you have to go to a stationary bike. Just see that stationary bike might not be fun for hips. It might not, you know? You might have to come up with some alternative, but here's my challenge to you, Terry. Let's figure out an alternative. If you can't walk, it doesn't mean you can't be part of the Venters group and we don't want you to leave just because walking's challenging. If walking's challenging, we'll figure out something else. Maybe walking is challenging and painful because it's a consistent 30 minutes. Maybe you could do something like uh, a treadmill indoors for 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, and just consistently stay as active, building the muscles around the area as you possibly can. In case you guys are wondering, Terry has a hip pointer or some sort of hip issue. I don't know if it's arthritis in the hips or what. She said what it was, but I've kind of forgotten the actual situation. Just know that Terry, uh, if, you, uh, if you guys believe in prayer, let's say a little prayer that Terry's hips 
get to feeling better and better and better. Terry, we want you back to walking, but we want you to be happy and healthy more so, okay? Guys, I wanna wish you a wonderful day. If you're in a situation where you can keep walking, keep walking. If it's super duper hot, maybe stop by home and get yourself a little water, okay? Stay hydrated. We don't want you to get sick or nauseous out here in the heat, wherever you are. But wherever you are, just know my thoughts are with you. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk soon.